Okay, video two on our discussion of logic using Venn diagrams. <clears throat> so we're going to discuss validity and soundness of, of an argument. And what is an argument? Well, it's a logical structure with premises. Now, these are things that we either know to be true or we're going to temporarily assume to be true while we're discussing this problem that attempt to prove some conclusion. And there are two main methods we're going to analyze logical argument. And this isn't an emotional argument like you might have with your friend. It's simply a structure in logic. One, is the argument valid? And that means, does the logic work? If you start with the premises and you assume they're true, does the conclusion follow? So notice you can't argue with the premises at valid. You can't say that argument's not valid because premise one is wrong. That wouldn't make sense because we're going to assume the premises are true. So we can't very well argue with them and assume them at the same time. The second discussion is the soundness of the argument. And for an argument to be sound, it has to be valid, so the logic has to work and the premises are true. So the only point where you get to discuss whether or not you believe the premises someone's using are at this question of soundness. So let's ex give it a simple example to see how this would work. So here is the logical argument we're going to use a Venn diagram to, to discuss. My first premise, premise one, is that all dogs have tails. Premise two is that Rocky has a tail. And since you don't know Rocky, I will tell you, Rocky has a tail, so you can't argue with premise two. Conclusion, Rocky is a dog. Well, we need to set up a Venn diagram to organize the possible things in the world. And we have dogs, and we have things with tails. Now, often I'll just use, like, the word tails above it. It's not actually the tails. We'll amplify that in our minds to mean animals with tails. So our universe... Now, you'll recall from the previous video, there was three different ways we organized possible things. And I want to talk about that now. Maybe someone will draw a picture like this. So we have all animals in the world, we have dogs, and we think, have things that have tails. Well, let's take a look at this picture and see if this is a possible picture of our world. Premise 1 said that all dogs have tails. So this is very important. Is this going to agree with what we have? So what would X be in this picture? Well, it's certainly a dog. It's inside the dog circle, but it doesn't have a tail. It's outside of the tail circle. So this is a dog with no tail. Now, this can't very well be our picture of the world if we already found an animal in it that is impossible if premise one is true. And we are assuming premise one is true, so all dogs have tails. So this tells me this picture cannot work. Let's try another one. This might be some dogs have tails, but it's not going to agree with this problem we're working. All dogs have tails. Well, here, the dogs and the tails are completely disjoint. They don't intersect at all. So this would be the world if no dogs have tails. So clearly this picture doesn't work for what we're trying to do. Now we get to this picture here, the third possibility that we saw in the previous uh, video. The dog circle is inside the animals that have tails. <clears throat> All dogs have tails. Well, yes, anywhere you put a spot for a dog, it is inside the tail circle. So this would agree with premise one. All dogs have tails. Rocky has a tail. Therefore, Rocky is a dog. Okay, premise two, Rocky has a tail. What does that tell you about Rocky in this world here of animals? It tells us he has a tail. It doesn't tell us whether or not he's a dog. So all we know is he has a tail. He could be a dog, but he could be a cat with an unusual name or a hamster or anything else you might name Rocky. Plenty of other animals have tails. So I'm going to put a spot here for Rocky. Because given the information we know, dogs have tails and he has a tail. He shares a characteristic with dogs, but that doesn't prove he's a dog. So he could be a dog, but we certainly can't conclude he's a dog. This tells me the argument is not valid. The conclusion doesn't follow with certainty from the premises. Not good enough for it to be possible. It has to be certain. We have to know he's a dog from this information. Now, I know you guys know Rocky's a dog. You've seen pictures of him in class. If you've come by my office, you've seen pictures of Rocky and me all over the office. Here's a picture of him right here on my schedule. So clearly he's a dog. But that's not the point. We can't use that information. We're using the information in our premises. Dogs have tails and he has a tail. That does not prove he's a dog. So it's not valid. If it's not valid, we know for sure it is not sound. Because referring back to our definition, valid and sound, it has to be valid in order to be sound. So you're never going to have an answer ever where something's not valid but turns out to be sound. Impossible. Sound requires it to be valid. So this argument is not valid and not sound.